Yeah. It's really fantastic, really great. So we're going to move on to the meat of the meeting here, which is where we do the evaluation. We're going to try to move quickly because this is lasting a long time. We're trying to cut the agenda down a little bit. But one of the things I wanted to add again was to very quickly vote on the four attributes. We got the ballots ready. Can you put up a test pattern at that time? Do your same thing, or whatever you want to do. Well, yeah, let's Everybody get the ballots. Here. Let's so get we can the vote ballots per attribute. attribute. Through the attributes the way yeah. we normally do. We'll do it before we go the same way to another one, we'll stop and vote on it. How's that? Right, right. So yeah. let's get the ballots out to everybody. I got a few other things I want to say. Yeah, thanks. First, and number one is uh, a number of people have been heaping a lot of praise on me here. I really appreciate that, but um, there's no way that I could have done this by myself. And there's a, a couple of other experts in this room that I, I want to thank. Um, D. Nice of the ABS Forum, whose real name is Dwayne Davis. Um, Ed Johnson. We got this guy. And what we did was we spent two and a half days uh, evaluating all six of these panels, looking at their pre-calibration performance, calibrating them to the absolute utmost uh, capability of each panel, and then capturing all that data in a post-calibration format. We're using software from SpectraCal, which is called CalMan Pro. Um, it's recognized in the industry as the best software, for, certainly for calibration, I use it in my product development analysis with manufacturers as well because it's extremely expensive in terms of how much data you can actually get from a display with it. Um, so I wanted to thank SpectraCal also who sent Josh in. Uh, did he leave already? Yeah, yeah, I got a couple of It's too bad. So the support we've gotten from the manufacturers, the software hardware manufacturers, we appreciate it greatly. You guys were awesome. Thank you. Um, the other aspect of it is the gear that we're using. Um, I want to make sure everybody understands what that is. Um, our meters are state of the art. We have a couple of different ones. I use the Minolta CS200 chromometer. Um, Joel does. A number of a number of people in the industry are using. A lot of manufacturers use that meter. Um, Dwayne and Ed are using the Klein K10, which is also a really really high quality meter. Um, Dwayne also has tabulated the software in such a way, we'll look at it later when we're done going through the performance uh, parameters of all the sets, in such a way we'll put it up on the screens and it'll show you all of the before and after performance parameters for each one of these panels in a single document. Um, so with that said, let's get into the meat of the thing, evaluating the performance of the panels. Um, some years ago, uh, I mean, we've all been talking really hyped up on contrast ratio here. Some years ago, SEMPTI, one of the standards setting committees that's been around for a really, really long time, Joel mentioned the Society of Motion Picture and Television Engineers, um, did a, a pretty exhaustive study on the human eye and what the elements of a picture, what the most important elements of a picture are to our eyes uh, in descending order. And we're going to deal with the first four of them today. Uh, there are a few others that are real important. We'll probably touch on a couple of others, but we do have some time constraints. Number one, guess what? Contrast ratio. Yeah. Right? Um, misunderstood, misused by the, the industry in a lot of ways. We talked about dynamic contrast numbers, silly numbers like 1 million, 2 million, 3 million, 4 million, 5 million, 10 million to 1. That's a method that really has no real world um, meaning to you in your living room or your theater and what you're seeing coming off of your screen. It's a, a marketing kind of thing where, you know, the consumer always goes, wow, bigger number, better TV, right? I mean, and that's what it's being used for. And it's a method called on-off where they measure a panel that's shut off in a dark room that's completely black with no other light anywhere, and then they measure the very brightest point of, of that screen at its peak light output, and we get this gigantic number. Really is, I would, I mean, I don't mean to be mean, but it's a bogus number, and I was really psyched when Robert says, we've just given up this numbers game with that. That's a really bold move for a manufacturer to do, and I applaud it. I think the rest of the community should probably do the same thing. Um, there are meaningful numbers, though. Joel was talking about intra-frame contrast ratio, and, and what that is is you're measuring in fact, um, are we on the generator now, Ed? We are. Can we go to the um, uh, checkerboard pattern, please? We're measuring black and white when they're on the screen at the same time. 
that has some meaning because when we're looking at pictures in our theaters or our living rooms or whatever we're looking at, you're not looking at black with the TV shut off and then white with nothing else on it. You're looking at dark things in conjunction with bright things, and it's, you know, there's your contrast. So, ANSI method, I believe, uses this same pattern where you measure all the white squares, you average out the number, or I should say start with black, measure all the black squares, average the numbers, measure all the white squares, average the numbers, and then divide the black into the white, you get your ratio. Um, we did that, and we'll have the numbers for you later. But just to give you an idea, I think Joel touched on it. I mean, if we're getting 200 to 1 in the movie theater, pictures in movie theaters look pretty good. Right? Now, we can exceed that in the home now very handily, but not to the tune of 10 million to 1, I can assure you. You're not getting that in the living room. So, um, Bill had asked me to kind of touch on this, and it, and it was a great suggestion because um, there are, I mean, static, dynamic, uh, intra-frame, as Joel calls it. Mm -hmm. um, but that said, it is the most, most important thing to the human eye. Okay, so it is obviously very important. And it's largely governed by how well your display will produce black. Um, so we'll have numbers for you on that later. Um, Want to project black around? Can you hit the raster again for me, Ed, just yes, to show everybody black one more time? And then what we'll do is we'll we'll put up a black level test pattern to show you all that the black level has been set correctly on all of the panels. I'll raise it to make it incorrect so that you can see that all of these panels are on a level playing field. Now, what you're seeing now is the only one in the room that's really black is the Samsung because the LEDs have shut off completely. Uh, everything else is producing the plasmas this is basically the black that they're capable of producing when it's set correctly. Uh, we have a little bit of retention going on. That's not burn. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's very retention. temporary. Though. That'll go away. Yeah, it goes away naturally. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. it's kind of hindering your ability to see this the way it should be. But Actually, unfortunately, um, the black pattern is the one to look at, but we're right. not able to generate that across the panel. All right, Let, let's jump into a, a pouge here. Let me switch to... That image retention is very temporary and very, so to speak, common. Yeah, what is it goes away. That's a thermally based. Right. It, the, the areas that were white right. are obviously warmer than the areas right. that are black. Exactly. And Thank so you. it's a thermal inconsistency, which right. it, it goes away in minutes. Actually, go away. yeah, it goes away in minutes. That's not a phosphor burn. Right. 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 Now, once again, the universe is not playing. Um, can somebody? Um, Lane, can you do me a favor and well, just grab that's a good penny? <laughs> that's, that's a good thing. That <laughs> thing is still going strong. That's cool, man. And let's go to a pluge pattern real quick. Absolutely. You bet. Uh, well, let's start with the pluge. I want to show everybody we got that set right. We want to make it roll and panel to prove that, just so that um, you can all see that each panel, now keep in mind also, if you're off axis on any of the LCDs, you're not going to see this properly. You really need to be dead center. Black level and color get washed out severely when you get off angle on, on LCD panels. <laughs> Some are better than others. In fact, the LG is king of off angle viewing of anything in the room at the moment, but it still won't be right unless you're right in the middle of it. Right? So, so actually, Kevin, we're going to be voting on black level. We should really vote on that. Yeah, let me just... Um, so we can fill out our ballots. One more. Yep, we'll do that in one second before we move on. Let me just show them to show it to them incorrect. So you okay. can see, this pattern has 2% above black, 4% above black, and 4% below black in it. So if you're... When you're calibrating your television and setting black, black level, you raise it up so you can see this, which you're not supposed to see, then you bring it back down until you can't see it. And then it's correct. Um, then there are other patterns to kind of fine tune that, but we're right in here, right here. So, okay. Um, you want to vote on contrast ratio based on what we've seen already? So it's going to be a rating out of 10. 10 would be ideal, and the others are relative to that. 
I don't know. I think it's difficult to, 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 to do that without actually seeing content later, don't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to do it with, this, with the You can't just look at black and white and go, okay, that one looks like it was brighter or maybe blacker. It's, it's difficult. You have to look at material and see yeah. how how much depth there is to what you're watching and, and what the blacks look like in dark scenes. I almost think we ought to we ought to vote on this after we've looked at uh, um, Sin City and yeah. a couple mm -hmm. of other things. Dark Knight would be a good one begins as well. Sin City will tell like it all. That one That'll be yeah. great. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, let's hold off. So you don't want to use the test pattern to do black level? Just black level. Well, if you're doing black level, I mean. They're all set correctly, but the point is, if we go back to the generator, right. the one that's going to win is the one that shuts off. Okay. Right? It's all <laughs> <the way. laughs> is that fair? I don't think so. Okay. I mean, well, maybe we should feed it 2% black and see how they all do. So it's such a tiny okay. generated yeah. segment. Let's it feed it 1%. Right. Okay, okay, let's switch well, I don't think it turns on at 1%. Well, let's yeah. see what it turns on at. It turns on at 